Hello everyone. This is your course instructor Harshita. In the previous session, we studied about binary cyclic codes from module 4. So, continuing with the module 4, we have next topic as encoding using an N-K bit shift register. In case of binary symmetry, cyclic codes we use to perform the division of x bar n minus k into the message polynomial that is d of x by the generator polynomial g of x in order to obtain the parity check polynomial r of x instead of performing the division that division is accomplished in this encoding by using a dividing circuit which consists of a feedback shift register that is shown here. This circuitry consists of flip-flops that are denoted by R0, R1, R2 and so on till Rn minus K. And we also have the coefficients of the polynomial G of X as G0, G1, G2 and so on till g n minus k minus 1. If the respective coefficient of the generator polynomial is present, then this g0 or g1 or g2, the respective coefficient will act as the closed circuit. If not, meaning to say, if the particular coefficient is not present, then this will act as an open circuit. For our understanding, we'll consider an example and we'll understand how and in which case it acts as a closed circuit and in which case it acts as an open circuit. And as you all can see, we have a feedback path for the shift operation in order to occur. And the message bits, that is D of X, d0, d1, d2 and so on till d n minus k minus 1 is provided as the input to this circuitry from this node that is message input and we have two switches over here switch 1 and switch 2 from this whenever the switch 1 is closed the message input will be fed as the input to this circuitry and the flip-flops that is R0, R1 and R2 and so on till Rn minus k minus 1 will store the data that forms the remainder after performing the division of x bar n minus k into d of x by the g of x. So let us see how this division is accomplished by this dividing circuit which consists of a feedback shift register. Let us consider an example in order to understand the operating of this shift register. The question says, design an encoder for 7,4 binary cyclic code generated by G of X, that is the generated polynomial as equal to 1 plus X plus X part 3. And we're also supposed to verify its operation using the message vector 0, 1, 0, 1. So, this is the general block diagram of this feedback and shift register uh, which has a feedback. Now, in order to answer for this solution, we need to incorporate this G of X polynomial into that circuitry. So, we have to rewrite that circuitry. So, let's see how we can rewrite that. Here we have the polynomial as 1 plus x plus x bar 3. This is g0 coefficient g0 into 1 plus coefficient g1 into x plus coefficient g2 into x square plus coefficient g3 into x cube. The polynomial will be in this form. That is g of x. All right. So from this polynomial, we have to find out the values of g0, g1, g2, and g3. So since we have 1 over here, that is 
x bar 0, right? So, we have g0 as equal to 1. And 1 into x, that is g1 into x. So, we write g1 as equal to 1. And do we have x bar 2 in this polynomial? No, right? So, the standard form of this polynomial is g2 into x square. Since x square term is not there, we will write g2 as equal to 0. And x cube is there. Therefore, I write g3 as equal to 1. Next, we have the message vector as 0, 1, 0, 1. So, let's write d of x, the message vector, is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. And we'll name the corresponding bits as d0, d1, d2, and d3. One thing you have to always remember in this concept is that d3 in this message vector will be first fed as the input into, into this encoder circuitry. So, let's see how we'll write that. Since we have g0, g1 and as 1 and g2 as 0 and g3 as 1, g0 is equal to 0, so this is a closed path. g1 is equal to 1, so this is also a closed path. Okay, and g2 is equal to 0. Where do we have g2? Go back to this block diagram. Between this flip-flop R1 and R2, we have g2. So that we should make it as an open circuit. So between R1 and R2, we have g2. So that should be made as an open circuit. Therefore, we have not drawn any closed path between the flip-flops R1 and R2. And next, we have G3 as equal to 1. So where is that G3? Last one. Okay. So that is accomplished by using this line. All right. So G3 is equal to 1. Next, write the message vector. That is 0, 1 and 0, 1. Rest part of the circuitry is written as it is. All right. And next, we have supposed to write a tabular column, which consists of three columns. First column is input bit. Second column is register inputs. Third column is register outputs. Input bit is represented by small letter D and the register inputs are denoted by R0i, R1i, R2i and the register outputs are represented by R0o, R1o, R2o. You can see the data that is sent over here will be XORed with the output of the second, third flip-flop and that particular data will be sent to this XOR gate as the input and also to this R0 as the input. And then what is the input to this next flip-flop? The output of this R0 and the data that is over here will be XORed and that will be given as the input to this flip-flop R1. And what is the out input of this third flip-flop that is R2? The output of flip-flop R1 will be the input of flip-flop R2. Okay, this is how we analyze this circuitry. And coming to the analyzing of the shifting operation in this encoding circuitry, we'll start with feeding this circuit with initial values equal to zero. So we'll write in the initial stage, all the flip-flops are fed with the value 0. So, we'll give 0 values. So, the output will also be 0. So, here in step 1, we are going to feed all the flip-flops with 0 value. So, the outputs are written over here and they're all equal to 0. And next, what we do is we'll feed the data that is 1. D3 will be always fed 
first into the circuitry as I said earlier. So this one in this message vector is fed into the encoder. So the previous output of this flip-flop R2 is zero. So this zero and this message bit one will be XOR. So zero XOR with one, I'll be getting one. So one will be fed as the input to this R0. And the previous stage output of this R0 will be XOR with this one and will be fed as the input to this flip-flop that is R1. XOR operation of zero and one will give me one. So the input to the second flip-flop is also one. And what about the input of this third flip-flop R2? The input to this R2 will be the previous stage output of this flip-flop R1. Previously, output of this R1 was zero, right? So now in the next clock cycle, this output will become the input of this next succeeding flip-flop. So the input to this R2 is zero. So we have the inputs to R0, R1 and R2 as one, one and zero. So I'll go back to this table and I'll enter the data that is one, one and zero. After the first shift, these inputs will appear at the register outputs or the flip-flop outputs. So after the shift one or the first shift, the outputs will be one, one and zero. And next, we'll feed the second bit of the data, that is zero. So I've written a diagram in order to make the understanding of the concept in a simpler manner. So if this zero will be giving as the input to this encoder block. So now the outputs, previous stage outputs were one, one and zero, right? So I'll write one, one and zero over here. Okay, now this zero is fed as the input to this circuitry. Zero XOR with zero will give me zero. So this zero is fed as the input to this R0 and the same zero is also fed as the input to this XOR gate. And what about the input to this R1? That is the previous stage output of R0 XOR with the input okay to this xor gate that is one and zero one and zero xor operation will give me one so one will be the input to this r1 and what about the input to this r2 the previous stage output of r1 will be the input of the succeeding few register so previously output of r1 was one so now input of r2 will be one so now we have inputs of R0, R1 and R2 as 0, 1 and 1. So I'll write 0, 1 and 1. After the second shift, these inputs will appear as the outputs of the registers or the flip-flops. Next bit that we'll be providing as the input to this encoder block will be 1. So previously, we had the outputs as 0, 1, and 1. So this one XOR with the input. So 1 and 1 XOR operation will give me 0. So the input to the first flip-flop will be 0. And here also I'll have 0. The output of R0 previously was 0, right? So 0. XOR with zero will again give me zero. So the input to this R1 is again zero. Okay, and next, what about the input of R2? Previous stage output of R1. So previous stage is here. Output of R1 is one. So input to this R2 is one. After the third shift, these inputs will appear at the outputs. So after shift three, we'll write the output as zero, zero, and one. So the basic understanding what you, what we got from this circuitry is the data that is obtained after XORing operation here, that is D, is the input to this R0. So R0i 
is equal to D. I'll write. And next, R1I, first, second flip-flop input is nothing but XOR operation of R0I and D. So I'll write R0I XOR with D. And R2's input is previous stage output of R1. So I'll write R1 output. Okay. So next, the last input that we are going to feed to this encoder block is 0. So the outputs are 0, 0 and 1. This 0 will be XORed with this 1. So I'll get 1. So D is equal to 1. So the input to this R0 is 1. And this 1 XORed with the previous stage output of R0, that is 0. So we have 0 here and 1 here. A1 XORed with 0 will give me 1. So I'll write 1 here. And next, what is the input to this R2? Previous stage output of R1. So we have 0 over here, the previous stage. So the 0 is the input to this R2. So after fourth shift, these inputs will appear as the outputs of the registers. So this is how we analyze. And this data is nothing but the remainder that we get after performing the division. So this is how this encoding using an N minus K bit shift register works. Now, as a small assignment, I want all of you to try for the message vector one, zero, zero, and one, and understand the operation of this dis designing of an encoder using N minus K bit shift register. In case of any doubts, you can always get it clarified by me. So in the, this is it for this session. In the next session, we'll continue with the next topic. Thank you all.